it's been said that promises are the sweetest lies. On today's case, Mrs. Ramsey suspects her husband, Mr. Ramsey, has been lying about one of his biggest promises, sobriety. She says once they said I do, Mr. Ramsey couldn't say I won't to the temptation of drug use. Mrs. Ramsey says all the signs are there, from missed financial obligations to sketchy disappearing acts, to car rides with random women. Mrs. Ramsey says she has no doubt her husband has slipped back into his old habits. She says she no longer is willing to compete with her husband's chemical mistress and is ready to serve him divorce papers today. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Ramsey versus Ramsey. Thank you very much. Mrs. Ramsey, you say that you are in court today because you can no longer stay in this marriage. You say your husband has a habit of disappearing, is irresponsible with money, and a cheater who parties too much. You say divorce is the only option for you. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Ramsey, you're here today to save your marriage. You say you would be lost without your wife and children. You admit to your past mistakes, but say divorce is taking it way too far. You want to leave court today with your wife hand in hand. Yes, ma'am. So we need to figure out if this marriage is actually over. And if it is, you all are going to be able to co-parent because there are children involved in this situation. I see, Mr. Ramsey, that you have brought a witness with you. We will speak to you later, sir. Thank you for joining us here at Divorce Court. So let's start with the fact that you all were dating 10 years ago, married for the last two years. What brings us here in court today, Ms. Ramsey? Your Honor, I brought my husband here today because I feel like I'm the only one fueling our marriage's well-being. He's falling back into old habits, disappearing. I feel like he's lying and cheating. And I need help. I don't know what to do. Either he needs to get it together or he needs to sign these papers. And you brought the papers to court today, so you are serious about yes, what you're saying. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Ramsey, you heard what your wife said. What do you say, sir? Your Honor, I admit I've been wrong in the past, but I, I love my wife, I love my family, and, uh, you know, I want to save my marriage. So I can see why your wife fell for you, so I see a little charming smile and all that. But something tells me that that smile wears off after a minute. Ms. Ramsey? Yes, ma'am. Why don't we start off with how y'all got together? We met the summer of 2011. I wasn't looking for anything serious, so we just kind of kept it casual, friends with benefits, until I got pregnant in 2014. Okay. We decided it was time to move in together. He had the home, so it just made more sense for us to both move into his home. Were you all both working at the same time? Were you both working we were outside of the home? I stayed at home. He worked. Um, then we finally made it official August of 2020, and things have just spiraled out of control since then. So what actually went wrong? He started falling back into those habits with the, the drug usage. And we had a family shopping trip planned one day. The kids needed sneakers, and then I had to get groceries. And we were going to do it together just because it's easier that way. It's, he, last minute, told me that he had um, plans with a coworker. A few hours goes by, this coworker knocks on my door looking for his work boots. I thought that he was with you. No, I haven't seen or heard him in several hours. So I just sat there pondering on it, waiting to see when he was finally going to show up. Yeah. He showed up later on that evening. I just didn't say anything, waiting to see his response. And he had nothing to say. Whenever I confronted him about it, he was a ghost. So to this day, do you know what happened? No. No, ma'am, I don't. Mr. Ramsey, why did you ghost her on this shopping trip? You know, I, I was with a different coworker. I, you know, I had plans to go to go look at another job, and we were going to try and do like some side work together, and you know, make some extra money. And so, are you suggesting it was simply a miscommunication as to which worker you were going to be with? Yes, ma'am. Um, Mrs. Ramsey says that you've fallen back to old habits. Shall I assume that there were some addiction issues in your relationship? Yes, ma'am. There was in the past. Mrs. Ramsey, can you talk to me a little bit about? how this is impacting on your family? Because I understand this is not the first time that the disappearing has happened. No, ma'am, it's not. He coaches for our kids' soccer, mm -hmm. particular soccer game. I take the kids, and he didn't show up to meet me there. So then I'm left, all these kids, and I'm basically having to act as this fill-in coach, which I can't do. Kids are coming up to me, asking me where he is. 
I didn't know what to say. He's out chasing tail instead of being with his kids. I can't tell them that. So that sounds like another ghosting instance. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ramsey, what's going on with you not being reliable when it comes to your obligations? You know, I worked late. You know, I... I couldn't make it, and I, I worked a lot of hours. Okay, you're supposed to be at the soccer field. Don't you think you owe an obligation to the kids? That they're, they're expecting their coach to show up. Well, of course, Your Honor, but I, my phone was probably dead at the time, you know, from her blowing me up all day. Okay, but why wouldn't you charge your phone? Your Honor, I work, I work out in the field. You know, there's not always electricity. So here. were you working? I was working, ma'am. So you just decided... I'll disappoint the kids. No, no, Your Honor. I can't control what time I get off work. Sometimes there's emergencies that happen. And I completely I... agree with that. But then, you know what the responsible person does? Is they let somebody know, probably their partner, that there's going to be a delay. That's just common courtesy. You're right, Your Honor. I didn't have a way to, to talk to her because, like, there's no, there's, no, there's no power out there to charge a phone to, to let her know. Okay, the first thing that you would need to do is get one of those portable chargers so that you have it in your pocket. Because when you have children, I quite frankly think that a father would want the ability to get in touch with his wife so that, God forbid, something should happen to my kids. Um, what else is going on? You put down in my court file that you're concerned about some cheating. Yes, ma'am. He is very secretive with his phone. This one night, put it on the charger and jumped in the shower, probably not thinking about it. So I picked it up and I noticed that he was conversating with this girl and asking her what her OnlyFans account was. And I kept scrolling through the conversation and she had sent him screenshots of like her page or whatever with all these naked pictures on it. A married man doesn't need to have nude pictures of another woman on her phone. This same girl, he's asking her, so when are we going to have sex? Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> The same girl. The same I, I girl. Didn't mean, I didn't mean to send that to her. Who'd you mean to send it to? Why are there naked pictures of an OnlyFans girl on your phone? You know, I, I didn't ask for nude pictures. I, I didn't know that's what she was going to send. If you ask for the OnlyFans site, you know what kind of pictures she's going to send. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, you'd ask for the Facebook pictures, because they don't let the nudes be on there. If you asked for the OnlyFans, you knew what you were going to get, sir. Well, I, honestly, I didn't know that's what they were going to say. I've never been on OnlyFans. I don't know then what it is. Why'd you ask for her site? We, well, because I was going to send it to my to my cousin and try and hook him up. But mm -mm -mm. I didn't know that's what they were going to I didn't know they were going to send the nude pictures. Like, I didn't respond to the nude pictures or anything. It like, sounds I didn't very pimp-like to me. I didn't say, like, you know, hey, that's a nice picture or, or you look good. I, I didn't respond to it at all. But a married man doesn't need to have nude pictures of another woman on her phone. This same girl, another occasion, he's asking her, so when are we going to have sex? Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the same girl. The same I, I didn't girl. Mean, I didn't mean to send that to her. Who'd you mean to send it to? Oh, I meant to send it to my wife. I did. Like, there, there, was, there was no conversation. There was no, like, you could see there's no other conversation in my phone, like, between, you know, between us. Like, it was, like, a complete mistake, you know, that I sent it. Because I'm at work, I'm on my phone, I got to move fast, and I just didn't, I didn't do it on purpose. So you sent a can we get a hookup message inadvertently to the OnlyFans girl? Yes, ma'am. Me and my wife had been having sex, but so 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 I was just trying to, you know, get something between me and her going. Why has my jury got their face all twisted up like to say <laughs> they don't believe you <laughs> at all? I get the feeling that the jury is looking at you like, sir, you got to come up with something better than that. Because mm -hmm. There's clearly evidence that you solicited another woman for sex. Whether or not it was inadvertent, you did it. I mean, there's no other conversation in that. There were not multiple text messages. It was just no. that one random one. It was one. just that one, but... So, do you believe him or not? No. I mean, there is some truth to that about then not being able to have sex thing. I had surgery in October, and I've just had a lot of issues since that surgery which has caused another issue. Okay. Whenever I had surgery, I got an infection after that, had to go back into the hospital. So he goes to the hospital with me, waits until I get admitted into a room, and then he leaves and can't get a hold of him. So I finally, hours later, whenever I got out of surgery, I tracked the GPS. And he was in just a bad part. I knew what he was doing. It was really late at night. So whenever I- What did I... you think he was doing? <laughs> Getting high. What makes you think that your husband is using drugs? 
I have a past. I am a recovering addict. And whenever we first met, we were doing it together. How so long have you been sober? A year and three months. No drugs at all? No, absolutely not. That's fantastic. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. And what made you make this change in your life? My kids, my marriage. I was just ready to settle down and be something. What about Mr. Ramsey? I'm trying to be supportive of him. He's not doing terrible. I mean, he does have his good moments, but he just falls right back into it. Mr. Ramsey, do you have a drug problem, sir? No, Your Honor. Ha or have you been doing drugs? Occasionally, I do. Why? What do you need to get high for? What's going on in well, your I life? Well, I mean, I, I, get stressed, I get stressed out and happen to be somewhere and it's there. I, I'll do some drugs, you know, sometimes. Well, I, don't, I don't go out chasing it, or, you know what I mean, or anything like that. So you inadvertently do drugs, sort of like you inadvertently message random women? Mm -hmm. I, uh, yep. The witness that he has brought, they get together and they party. Mr. York, are you involved in this occasional drug use? Like a little bit. Maybe Honestly, just a little bit. you might be a nice person, yeah. but I don't want my husband rolling around partying and having a little fun. That's just not a healthy environment for a married man. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. I mean, I might, I might, I might do drugs maybe like twice a month. But you have children. Yes, Your Honor. And I, don't I, you have a, a job? Yes, Your Honor. That the job depends on you? Yes, Your Honor. It sounds like it has a requirement for some kind of technical skill. Yes, Your Honor. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. Something tells me you shouldn't be high doing that kind of work. Am I missing my guess? No, Your Honor. So if you lose your job, who's going to take care of your family, sir? I don't know. I mean, it's my job to take care of my family. And if you are getting high, you might get hurt. Your Honor, and I feel like the witness that he has brought, which I don't know why he's here, plays a huge part in that as well. They just get together and they party. Well, let's actually get to the witness. Uh, Mr. Wark, will you please join the defendant at the defense table for me? Thank you. What's up, my man? Please state your name. I'm Richard York. Mr. York, I'm glad to have you. Tell me what your relationship is with the defendant. Uh, we're co-workers and we kind of... What kind of work do y'all actually do? Uh, we put in utility cables, excavation, kind of stuff like heavy exactly equipment Exactly like operators. I said, right? It, yeah. It's some pretty technical work, and you got to be deliberate about it, correct? Yeah, pretty much. Because you get hurt. Yeah, it's pretty dangerous. I actually told my brother not to join our company because of it. So tell me, Mrs. Ramsey thinks that her husband is cheating. Have you seen any evidence of that? No, because most of the time we're either working so we don't how, really have How is their friends. interaction, Mr. York? Tense. Stressful. I mean, she'll even show up to the job site sometimes, GPS him, see what he's doing, think he's not working. Then she'll show up, start arguing, cause a scene. He covers makes it look... for him all the time, though. <laughs> like, I'll call Rocky's phone, it'll be turned off, or he won't answer. And so then I'll call Richard's phone and He'll tell me, oh, well, he's just busy working. So, Mr. York, I'm, I'm listening to Mrs. Ramsey. It sounds like she doesn't trust Mr. Ramsey. Yeah, what which is unhealthy, right? No, well, it can be unhealthy if there's, if it's paranoid mistrust. But if it's mistrust based on something that Mr. Ramsey has done or is doing, mm. then it's rational, completely. Um, and Mr. Ramsey, you admitted that you have slipped into occasional drug use, but Mr. York, are you involved in this occasional drug use? Like a little bit, maybe just a little bit. Not much, okay, he, he does his own thing. He's with his family most of the time. And when he's not at work, if we do go and have some fun, it's not for a long time. Like he's usually back at his house by that night or something, so. Honestly, you might be a nice person. Yeah. But I don't want my husband rolling around just partying and having a little fun, because I'm not going to let you incriminate yourself in public. Yeah. I'm just going to say, having a little fun. That's just not a healthy environment mm -hmm. for a married man. 
And they you know? they feed off of each other. Like, I, I mean, but that's what friends do, Ms. Ramsey. And Mr. York, I don't want to cast aspersions against your character because you might be just a really nice man. But if hanging out is causing Mr. Ramsey to slip back into junky shenanigans, <laughs> that might be not a good idea. And it's jeopardizing my sobriety, which is a big deal. And that's a huge deal. Mr. York? I think you should always have some fun just so that you don't get to... Because the stress is always there. This just lets him get a little bit off his chest. But as long as he's, he's taking care of his man, stuff though. and going to work... He's a grown man. You shouldn't be doing that with a grown man. Uh, he's my boy. Do you think that they should get divorced? I don't think they should. I think they need a second opinion, other than myself, because she doesn't trust my word of mouth, necessarily. But... That's because you're partying and hanging out, dude. And listen, you're a young man. You can do anything that you want to do. But but because you're not married to her. Uh-uh. And no, I'm never it. gonna tell you what you can do unless your woman ends up bringing you in my courtroom, and then you and I are gonna have a real conversation. Fair enough? <laughs> Fair enough. You can have a seat. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Ramsey. Yes, Your Honor. Clearly, there needs to be some changes in this relationship if you want your marriage to work. Then I do, Your Honor. Mrs. Ramsey, what would you need to hear from Mr. Ramsey to that stay in this marriage? That he's willing to change, and I'm very serious about it. What does he need to do? Stop disappearing, communicating more, fixing the damage that he's caused in our and, marriage. And Mr. Ramsey, I would add, get rid of the occasional drug use. That has to go. Yes, Your Honor. And the friends. The occasional drug use or anybody that encourages you to do that. Yes, now, you can be friends with people, but if they're going to encourage you to do something that you know might be hurtful to you or your family, you have to tell me what's more important. Yes, Your Honor. Do you think that you would benefit from having some real marriage counseling? Your Honor, I'll do whatever I need to do to keep my marriage. i like to hear that, Mr. Ramsey. Would you both be willing to sit down with a counselor if I make that resource available to you? Yes. Absolutely, Your Honor. So will you hold on to those papers? while you go in and put your marriage to the test. You have children. Yes, ma'am. Yes, but by the same token, that's your priority right now, Ms. Ramsey. Yes. And yes. if Mr. Ramsey can't step up and be the in-house father, then he's gonna have to learn how to co-parent because you and your children need to come first. Would you agree? Yes, ma'am. So I tell you what I'll do. I will make those resources available for the two of you so that you can, one, learn to communicate with each other, and two, be more courteous to your wife. Let her know what's going on. You will not nag as much if he lets you know what's going on. And you all try to fix that communication. Yes, ma'am. Otherwise, he will be signing these papers. I've signed them today, and I'm very, very serious about it. Tell you what, Miss Ramsey, don't rip them up. Just hold them. Okay. And if you don't see a change in the next 30 days, I will make sure they get served for you. Thank you. Robert, we got an appointment in 30 days. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. You got 30 days. You better get it together. It seems like Mrs. Ramsey uh, really grew up. She grew out of being a party girl when she uh, realized that being a wife and mother was her priority. And you struggle with sobriety, and then if your partner is not part of that plan, it's hard, it's not, it's not easy. I love the fact she has decided in her own mind that this is the person that I'm going to be. I hope she requires her husband to make some real changes, otherwise he's gonna lose his family. Yeah, he, he needs to see that it's serious, and if he really wants to work on it, like he said, let's see. 30 days, mm -hmm. we'll put it in the book. <laughs>